Hi, my name is Kennedy and welcome back to my channel. Hi guys, my name is Kennedy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you guys my How I Ranked 3rd Freshman Year video. If you liked today's video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the video. Okay, so I'm going to segment this video into two different parts. Um, they will both be included in this video, but I'll leave the timestamp up for... Basically, I want to set up this journey in two different parts. So meaning my 8th grade experience and my ninth grade experience and like the tips that I have for you guys on how you guys can achieve a high ranking in your class. So I'll leave the timestamp in the description box down below and I'll leave it right up here on the screen if you want to just skip to the tips. Also, um, I spilt water on my shirt, so <laughs> don't pay attention to it, but I really needed to get this video filmed up because I want to batch record a few videos today. So, all right, so let's start eighth grade. <laughs> I wanted to talk about the type of mindset that I had that year because the mindset that I had that year was not that great for achieving high academically. So to preface, in one of my recent videos, I actually talked about how I had 8th grade-itis, which is basically the 8th <laughs> grade version of senior-itis. During this time, I wasn't mentally checked into school. I had the mentality that nothing mattered, like nothing that I did in middle school would matter because I was going to high school in a couple months. I even, <laughs> I even actually went as far to write a whole paper on how meaningless school was. I did this for my speech in English class, which is like the big speech of the year that year, so. Yep, I would even go as far as to put a screenshot right here on the screen of that speech. But I actually think that the speech was pretty good and had a lot of valid points. But at the same time, the reason why I made the speech was not very valid. I made the speech to call out one of my teachers who I didn't like. And I did not do this to give a new perspective on school like I should have. So what went into effect was I didn't like one of my teachers. Now I am not apologizing for not liking her, even though, oh. Even though I should, but I will say that since I did not like that teacher, it actually affected my grade heavily in that class because I didn't want to do the work just to make that teacher mad. Which I am not suggesting that you do. Do not do that. Now, let us us recap. I had eighth grade itis. I did not think that school mattered and I did not get along with some of my teachers. All of these things combined not only affected my mindset, but it also affected my academics. So the type of classes I took in 8th grade were all honors classes. I've been in honors classes since elementary school, so an accelerated learning environment has always been very comfortable and normal for me. All the classes I took in 8th grade were honors classes as well. I'm actually going to list and name out for you guys the classes I took that year. Honors Math, Honors ELA, Social Studies, Science, Robotics, PE, Health, and Green Architecture. At my school, they only offered honors classes for math and ELA, but they tended to keep all the honors kids together throughout the day, so we always had an accelerated learning environment. So, with all that being said, I can't believe I'm actually saying this. Let's take a look at my grades from that year. Now, you guys might be expecting a lot worse than what you're receiving, but let me tell you guys something. I have always been an overachiever at heart. No matter what kind of mindset I'm in, I'm always an overachiever. But I want to tell you guys why I think the grades are bad. I believe these grades were bad because I know I could have done better. I also think these grades are bad because 8th grade was so easy, like there is no reason why I should have got anything lower than a 95 in any of my classes. Matter of fact, middle school is easy. There is no reason why you should not be getting an A in any of your classes. That's just plain old not trying. So with all that being said, I'm going to show you guys my 8th grade years and I'm going to compare it to my 6th and 7th grade year grades and you can see the difference clearly. So 
now it is time to talk about my ninth grade experience. So let's talk about the type of mindset that I had in ninth grade. Going into ninth grade, I still had the same mentality that I did in eighth grade. I thought that it was just ninth grade and that I still had three years to go. Let me tell you that was not the case. After the first few weeks in orientation and after I took that first math quiz, I was like, girl, they ain't playing around here in high school. <laughs> no, they was not playing around. I think my first grade on a math quiz was it was a c it was a solid 73 and really c's were incredibly rare for me i never i never got a c unless it was in that one teacher i didn't like's class i never unintentionally tried to get a c so the fact that that had happened i was like sis gotta get to work so from that point on, my mindset took a whole 180. From that point on, I was more motivated. I started actually watching study videos, which I hadn't been introduced to, which I hadn't been introduced to at the time. I had only been introduced to the bullet journaling community and like the artsy community and stuff, and I absolutely loved every. But I was soon introduced to the study community because I needed some study motivation for myself. Because I had never studied before. It was a real newsflash to me because I didn't know how to study. So the whole first quarter of freshman year, I was basically just trying to figure out how to study because I didn't know how to. I came out of freshman year with a GPA of 4.667. I ranked number three out of 532. And here is how I did it. My first tip for you is to learn how to study. Before I knew how to study, I was barely getting by with Bs. I know specifically for me at my school, all the honors classes you had to study if you wanted to make an A. I took many different measures to study. I took notes. I would go to tutoring. I would even go to the library every morning before school to help me catch up on things or to make sure that I know the material for that day's test. Another trick I like to use to study was make Quizlets. I made a Quizlet for every single test there was, unless it was a math test. Quizlets really help you study, especially with memorization. There are many different features on Quizlet, like the write, the learn, and they even make practice tests for you. The second tip I have for you is to learn how to manage your time. Whenever you're in a whole bunch of honors classes, I know especially it can get very overwhelming, especially if you have many extracurriculars. For example, I play year-round soccer, so at least three times a week, during the weekdays, I would have soccer practice. Soccer practice would be a three hour gap out of my schedule. So with soccer practice, that meant that I needed to learn how to manage my time to be able to study and do my homework. What I did was I kept a bullet journal and I also wrote down my task using the Momentum extension on my laptop. Managing your time is super important because you have to make time out of your day to do your homework. You have to make time out of your day to study. If you want to be at the top of your class, you have to do those things. The next tip I have for you is to have the overachiever mindset. You can be born with the overachiever mindset and you can also teach yourself the overachiever mindset. I know myself personally, I was born with the overachiever mindset because I've always been that type of person, but I know plenty of people who have coached themselves into that mindset. When you talk yourself into this mindset, it helps you get a clear vision in your head of the goals that you want to achieve. When you are an overachiever, you make sure you go above and beyond to make sure your assignments are A1. When your assignments are A1, you get the highest grade that you can get. The next tip I have for you guys is to ask questions. When you're in class, it is always important 
important that you ask questions on something that you don't understand. And it's even more important when you ask questions on things that you think that you understand so you are not confusing it in your mind. Everyone will always get mad at me because I would be sitting there asking every single question under the sun, but guess what? Your girl was catching 100 on her test because she was asking every single question under the sun. When you ask questions, typically the teacher breaks it down even more so you can know. The next tip that I have for you is to not over stress. Now I know that this can be very contradicting to all the things that I just said, but not over stressing yourself helps you have a clear mind. I know that the times that I was really stressing, I was really struggling with my grade. When I finally let it go and I let myself have a sense of peace with what I was doing, I started to see an improvement in my grades. Alrighty guys, that'll be the end of today's video. If you liked today's video, please like, comment, and subscribe. I really hope that you guys find these tips helpful for yourself so you guys can achieve a high ranking in your class. Also, I really hope that you guys found inspiration from my story that if you are struggling, you can do a 180 and get yourself back up to the top. But as you guys know, I post every Tuesday and Friday at 11.30 a.m. Central Standard Time and every single one of my posts is a premiere. So if you want to come chat with me, come on to the premiere. Also, this is only my schedule for the rest of the summer. So let me know what days work for you guys during the school year and what times you guys would like to see me post. And with all that being said, I love you all and goodbye.